What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tanks, bringing it to you with more from the University of Florida's Aquaculture Lab. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm having a riot showing you all some of this. While I was there, I was just a kid in the candy store, but to actually unpack it and uh, deliver it to you all feels freaking fantastic because it was a riot to take these videos. So if you're just now joining us, Last Sunday, we showed you part of one of my trip to the University of Florida's aquaculture lab, and then on Tuesday, we showed you part two. This is part three. We got a part four coming as well, but for those of you just joining us, please click the links around here, either top right if you're on mobile device or down in the description box, to see the two videos and ultimately the four videos we've done from this location. We first got to take a look at the captive bred hippo tangs, and if you think about this, it's pretty remarkable, especially for such a sweet fish and the fact that they won't need to be collected from the wild. This is being done down in Florida, folks. How fantastic is that? We also showed you what just some of the PhD students have been working on with the University of Florida Aquaculture Lab, and in today's video, we're going to show you more from the lab. However, before we get into this video, I do want to take a quick step back and tell you how this all came to be thanks to our friends at Seagrass. Seagrass Farm was the company that worked with me to come down and do this. It was Sandy Moore at Seagrass who I literally had a five second conversation with at the Aquatic Experience on how I'd love to somehow get down there and see what they all had going on. So five years ago I went on expedition on the Rio Negro with Project Piava and I came back to the U.S. wondering how the industry really could support the, the fishery of the Rio Negro here. Now before I could even hatch the Monday after the aquatic experience, I was emailed by the always pleasant Miss Shelby Bush, the ambassador of Seagrass, which I opened up a dialogue for what our goals were for me to come down there. We crafted a great plan for a bunch of videos that aren't even ready for you all yet. Shelby and I spoke about how I was a history major and wanted to highlight some of the history of the area. Folks, I get to see some cool stuff, but you are going to crap your pants when you see the video I'm releasing from the now deceased Mr. Albert Greenberg's home. He was the first person to bring in and expand the Florida fish farming business back in the 1930s. I went to his house. I saw his ponds. It's amazing. But more on that later. I also went out to eat with our friends at Seagrass one night only to come back to a 20 box fish unboxing import from the Czech Republic. This includes some amazing Apisto cichlids as well as some fish that I'm not ready to talk about yet but were totally amazing. Just breed and breed their own stuff and probably got really refined technique as you can see here by this awesome Apistogramma Agazizi double cow. Look at that. This is a pretty ridiculous uh, thing to just roll into. I'm impressed. And you see this all the time. I see Hi. your face smiling. I got a full tour of the Seagrass fish farm and I got to spend some fantastic time with the founder, Mr. Elwin Seagrest himself, talking about how he got started, which is just a truly special moment for me. Well then what was one of your, what was one of your maybe favorite times or like or maybe maybe not even a favorite time, but a moment where you like you looked around and all of a sudden you're on you know, five acres. Was there, was there any kind of aha moments or, or favorite favorite times? I guess when the... Um... I've also got a fantastic finale for you all from the University of Florida Aquaculture Lab this Sunday. But today, here is my man Roy in part three of four talking about what he does at the University of Florida Aquaculture Lab. Enjoy.
I've never kept them. Yeah, they I caught them in the I caught them in the Amazon, but I've never actually. Uh, they kept grind them. on snails, so you hear them crunching away sometimes. Oh, they're so sweet. These are figure eights. Are these pure fresh? I don't even know. Um, they're in fresh now, but they're brackish. Okay. Some of those might be green spots. I'm not really great on my puffer. We we had two green spots and figure eights. I'm here with Roy in the Aquaculture Lab. Roy, introduce yourself, man. I want to show what's going on here. Say what's up. Sure. Hey, um, my name is Roy. As you mentioned, I'm uh, the professor and extension veterinarian here at the. Hey, quiet on the set. Oh, sorry. <laughs> here you go. Okay. Anyway, so you're professor of Aquaculture yeah. Lab. Right? Yeah, I'm a professor and extension veterinarian here at, at the uh, University of Florida's Tropical Aquaculture Laboratory. Uh, we are a lab that does a lot of work with the aquaculture industry, with the fish farmers. We um, work with wholesalers and retailers trying to help out any uh, specific problems they have. We may, for example, have a, a farm that's having some issues with fish that are maybe dying on a small scale. Sometimes it's related to water quality, sometimes it's related to parasites, sometimes it's bacterial, but we really try to help them figure out everything, look at management, get them back on the right track and give them the, the right recommendations. So we, we deal with a lot of different types of fish as well, freshwater and marine. So a little bit of a little bit of everything. We really uh, wow, koi and Oscar. There you go. There's a koi and Oscar. Exactly. Yeah, we, we do a lot of outreach programs too. So that's from one of our outreach programs. We uh, help the producers to kind of get a better handle on the insides and outsides of their fish, so they know what they're dealing with, and also have a better idea. Some of the farms actually even do some of their own parasite exams on their fish on their facilities. Um, we we kind of help train them to do that and. Uh, you know, do everything we can to help them out. You made me scene select this for a couple minutes. What are we looking at here? Sure. So this is a this is a, a type of flatworm that oops, just went off the screen. We got it. Screen. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. All right. Type of flatworm. Yeah, it's a type of flatworm. Um, it, I believe this is a digenean. So it's a it's a flatworm that has a kind of complicated life cycle. But um, these can be found in fish. A lot of the common ones we see in the freshwater aquarium fish that we raise in ponds have a bird snail fish life cycle meaning that they need to have the bird and the snail right. as part of the uh, to complete the life cycle and to kind of reproduce and make more of them um, and and then they kind of sit in the fish for a while until they get eaten by a bird and, and continue the life cycle so, ah. so yeah kind of kind of funky but um, pretty cool we deal with you know the, the so many different species of fish again marine freshwater that we always are learning new things and helping to kind of increase the knowledge base for uh, the, the hobby and with regard to diseases. Uh, we also work with a lot of different people, um, a lot of experts around the, the country as well as definitely here at, at the University of Florida to try to make you know our fish coming out of Florida as healthy as possible. That's awesome. That's a great resource, man. How can people find out more about you and how can people find out more about your podcast? Sure. Podcast. Oh, I can't even believe oh, you ever mentioned that. Oh, awesome. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I don't so, have to be uh, the only one talking if I get to be on it. It's great. Well, actually, if you if you Google my name, Roy Yanong, Y-A-N-O-N-G, and Aquarium Mania, the podcast will pop up. But otherwise, it's Aquarium Mania on PetLifeRadio.com. Uh, the University of Florida, we've got a uh, website for our lab, the Tropical Aquaculture Laboratory. So if you Google UF Tropical Aquaculture Lab, you'll find out more about the work we do here, including the aquatic animal health that my group um, does a lot of work in. I love it. Hey, thank you so much for having me out, man. I've had a ride. This is shot with my iPhone because I ran out of video or ran out of battery in room with my other camera. I'm having so much fun. Tank on, everybody. Later. Thanks for the tour, man. This is great. Shelby, you got that other camera? Right.